West Side. East Side. All around the town. Across the moat around Manhattan Island come the hundred thousand things that people wear, eat, sleep in, and use to build their houses. Buttons from a factory in New Jersey, brought in by truck. China from Austria for the people of New York State, in a truck. And in a black sedan, murder on a Thursday morning. They'll never believe me. A guy with a record, he's born. They'll never believe me. They're going to come here straight as an arrow with their fingers pointing at me. No, I'm not going to be here waiting for him. Don't run, man. You can't, not anymore. Promise me, promise me you won't run. Please, please. and I saw this guy with the gun still in his hand and we looked at each other. Question, can you identify him, do you think? Answer, I think I'd know him if I saw him again. Question, I'm going to ask you to look through the mug books to see if you can find this man's picture there. Answer, I'll be glad to do that. Okay. Now put this down, will you? Is this the man you identified before when I asked you this question? Yeah, that's the guy. Mr. Brewer, why did you uh, pass over this picture and then go back to it? This guy's got a mustache. You mean this afternoon when he killed Lewis, he didn't have a mustache? No. Well, he might have shaved it off. Okay. I want the record to show that the witness identified Willie Willie Sabadowski. I'm sorry, I didn't get that last. How do you spell that? Sabadowski? Uh, here. You got any questions you want to ask him? No, I don't think so. Anything specific the DA's office wants us to know? What do you know about Sabadowski? Sabadowski, from St. Louis. Last ten years, anyway. I didn't know he'd been in town. Well, he could have come in town, just for this job. It's been done. All right. 
Check up the neighborhood, see what you can pick up. Make up an extra copy for Lieutenant Parker. Can I go now? Yeah, why not? Seven hundred dollars in his pocket, some change, credit cards, identification cards, some photographs. I can read. What about the notebook? Well, it's just what it says. List of names, money. It's all in code. I gave it to the code boy to see if they could figure it out. Maybe he's making a book. In a little book? I never heard of a bookie keeping a book. Maybe a loan shark. We'll find out. China. Oh, you're kidding. No. We're looking for treasure. You have to go to China to find treasure, don't you? Is that true? He's just kidding us. Find anything? About a quarter about an hour ago. No gun. Sewer people find anything? Yeah, a quarter, about an hour ago. I should have been on a sewer detail. I turned this place sunny side up. Frank. Yeah. You answered the call this morning, didn't you? Yes, sir, me and Cochran. May I see a list of your witnesses? Well, I got a lot of names, but all of them got here after the truck driver started to holler. I think you've got a lot of nothing here. That's the way we always start. Lots of nothing. Button, button, and you've got to find it. But you don't know where it is, and you don't know what it looks like. By the rules of the game, you can ask questions. And you begin to collect the mass of irrelevant information and relevant misinformation, which you hope will eventually lead you to the haystack itself, in which the button is hidden. I have a report here that you were the lady that called the police. Yes, I was. Wait a minute. What's he want to know for? Well, he's the police. He's asking questions. When the police ask questions, people get into trouble. I've lived with you for 23 years. I'm not afraid of trouble. I'm glad you came. I got something on my mind. How do you know he'd be interested? Do you want to sleep in the Turkish bath tonight? Come on in. I'll tell you. Thank you. Give me an egg cream, will you? Chocolate or vanilla? 
Who ever heard of a vanilla egg cream? It's a specialty at our house. You don't want to try it? I don't want to try it. From people like you without adventuring them, we didn't get a Lindy to fly the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. aren't you? It shows. I heard you asking questions. Mm, yeah. You know, Mr. Brewer's a nice guy. Mm. He's the only guy around here, if you want air for your bike tires, he lets you have it. Is Mr. Brewer going to get into trouble? On account of the fight he had with the guy that got killed. You were down there watching him fighting? I was right there all the time. Oh. You know, I ordered this special for you. You have my undivided attention. You ready for Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Mike. Shoot. Well, this is the service station. This is the murder car. And these are the approaches. You come into the station from here, from here, and from here. At any rate, these are the positions from which you can be seen. Over here is a diner. A lot of people going back and forth. Across the street over here, there's a woman looking out of a window most of the morning. Down here, there's a bar. A couple of guys playing the pinball machine, which are stationed in such a way that you could see through the window over here to the station. Now, Mike, none of our possible witnesses saw a car or a person approaching or in the service station at the time of the crime. However, many people did see Brewer talking to the victim. It was a little neighborhood kid who thinks Brewer was the end of the world. He was worried because he thought Brewer was going to get into trouble on account of the kid heard Brewer having a fight with the murdered guy. We checked carefully. We couldn't find a murder weapon at the scene of the crime or in the station itself. Proves what? So the killer stuck the gun back in his pocket. The last piece, Mike. Do you remember the woman that notified us? Mm -hmm. Well, she says she'll swear she caught a quick glimpse of a gun as she ran into the office to make the call. She said she saw Brewer wrapping what looked to her to be a gun in a piece of newspaper. <laughs> I've taken a chance on you. The first time when I married you, I told you I wasn't a marrying guy. The second time, I got my parole. You talked me into buying a service station. And then this morning, if I didn't listen to you, I'd be running the rest of my life. Sit down, my dear. I'm, I'm saying it wrong. I, I never took the chances. From the very first date, you're the one that took the chances. It's honest money. I, I mean, no, it isn't honest. I stole it from us. It's my holdout money, 1,200 bucks. Such a lot of money. You see, I just never figured that we made it. 
No. You see, when things got pressing down at the station, I, I put 10 bucks in there or 20 bucks, and once in a while I put 40, 50 bucks in there. Because I just kept saying to myself, I gotta get away. Oh, baby, I, I'm so ashamed. You never touched it, did you? No, I, I kept adding to it. I figured I'd take off for Vegas by myself and build it into a real bundle. Don't you understand, babe? I, I never figured it for you. It was mine. I wasn't going to share it with you. And now I, I just want you to have it. You see, now what I want for you is a garden, a, a backyard where you could do what you want with your crazy flowers. You never touched it. That's all I get. Mr. Grower, I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder. This warrant entitles me to search the premises. He's not a murderer! Run! 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 Young lady, if you think you can behave yourself, you can stay. All right, fellows, let's get on with the search. You two can sit down. Over here, brother. Mr. Brewer, you tell a very interesting story, considering the fact that you leave out the best parts. You didn't think it was important to tell us that a Mr. Lewis advanced you the money to buy your gas station, the same Mr. Lewis who was murdered this morning. You also failed to tell us that he came around this morning for a collection. Was he pressing you too hard? No, I, I paid him 200 bucks. That's even more important, considering the fact that there's no note of it in his account book. You didn't pay him. 200 bucks. Maybe he didn't have time. You also failed to tell us that you have a record and that you're on parole this very moment. Well, I... I know, I know, we didn't ask you. But you were very quick to volunteer to pick out Willie, Willie Zavadowski, when we handed you the mug book. He's the guy that did it. Nobody saw him. Nobody saw him come, nobody saw him go, nobody saw him do anything. But they did see you, Mr. Brewer. Yeah, sure, they saw me. I worked there. I, all right, I was sore at him. I hollered, that's all I did. How about the gun you had in your hand when the lady came in to phone the police about four minutes after the murder? How about that, Brewer? Give him a chance to think. What'd you do with the gun, Brewer? It, it's not the gun that killed Lewis. It, it's a gun I brought home from the service 15 years ago. And of course, being on parole, you did have a permit, didn't you? Look, look I needed it for protection. I, I can't get to the bank at nights. I was sent up for knocking over a service station. Don't you think I know what a sitting duck a service station is at night? The gun hadn't been fired in 15 years. I... You swore to me you got rid of it, Lynn. I, I needed it. I knew you'd give me an argument. So I'm sorry. Brewer, what did you do with the gun? You wouldn't believe me. Try me. I wrapped it in a bag. I put it into the side of a truck. Which truck? I don't know what, which truck. It would, the truck was parked in front of the service station. It's a quarter of a million trucks in New York, Brewer. Which one was it? How do I know what, what truck? I was in a panic. I, I got a gun. There's a dead guy in my station. The cops are coming. If I get caught with a gun, I'm in trouble. Well, that part of it's pretty accurate, Mr. Brewer. You are in trouble. Mike Parker is satisfied, and so is the district attorney. By the evidence on hand, George Brewer is a murderer, unless his story is true, unless there is a gun. It takes 28 minutes by police van from the 65th precinct to the tombs. In that time, handcuffed wrist to wrist with another man, you can judge him a liar, or you can believe him.
giving yourself an even break. You're not even trying. Now, there must be something that's stuck in your mind. Something that you're unaware of. Now, look, there was something about that truck that made it different than any other truck. Now, what was it? What made it different? Come on, that's what I want to know. I just can't remember. Maybe you don't want to remember, huh? Maybe you don't want us to find that gun. The gun wasn't fired in 15 years. I'm telling the truth. And the truck... It, it, it's just a plain, ordinary truck. Come on, think. Well, think! On the back end of that truck, yeah. painted on the rear end was, was a motto to tell cars what side to pass. And, and the one on that side said, a short life. The other must have said, like, a, a long life. Well, now I've got something to look for. Mike, let me go look, will you? What are you going to look for? You're going to check up on every truck yard, express company, shipping firm, and factory in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and maybe 46 other states. Look, I start from the assumption that the truck is from the neighborhood. An old truck. Now, nobody uses an old truck for interstate traffic. You're an expert. Oh, I'm no expert, but it just stands to reason. The only thing that stands to reason is that you're sold on this guy. Adam, a policeman can't be sentimental. A policeman has to call him as he sees him. I am calling this the way I see it, Mike. But we don't need the gun. We got a case without the gun. The DA's ready to go before the grand jury and ask for an indictment right as it is. Suppose a man's innocent. Suppose he's telling the truth. The gun was never fired. Then what? Here we go. Nailing me to the cross. Me and old Lieutenant Parker. The hanging cop. Adam, I was chasing justice before you were playing with the Little League. Can I go look, Mike? Don't ask my permission to do something that you're going to do, whether I say yes or no. Thanks. Mike. Supposing I'm wrong. What's the matter? Chicken? Afraid to stick your neck out? <laughs> Straight and down another. There he set the tree when it was younger still, and there it grew till it barred all the earth. And in its shadow there came yet another tree, fruit of the first. That's very moving, isn't it? Yeah, don't mention the word moving. That's all I've been doing all day. Did you have a hard morning? Pretty hard morning, yeah. I had a very interesting class this morning. Yeah? Yep. Do you know what the director said to me? <laughs> no, what did the director say to you? He said, Libby, he said, you're a lousy actress. What did you say? I was very controlled. I only threw a chair at him. <laughs> That's a pretty good opener. Then he yelled. Then I yelled. Then he yelled, and then I screeched at the top of my voice, What do you know about acting? <laughs> A quiet morning in the American theater. That's when he threw his arms around me. He threw his arms around you? Hmm. What was he trying to do, strangle you? Oh. That's a felony, you know. You want to press charge? Oh, you idiot. No, no, he was hugging me. That's what he wanted me to do in the scene. To screech? To screech. Nice. Adam, let's go for a walk, hmm? Come on. A walk? I've done all the walking I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. 
Oh, feet, you deserve better. You're going about this in the whole wrong way, I think. Yeah? Yep. Now, if I were investigating a, a murder, I, uh, I wouldn't walk around. I'd sit down, and I'd wait for the criminal to return to the scene of his crime. <laughs> well, we can lose a lot of criminals that way. Okay. You dare to speak to me that way? You're gonna wake up the fuck. Get your feet out of the lake, Jack, and get your shoes on. What do you think you are, on the Riviera? Next thing, you'll be coming down here in bikinis. Oh, yeah. And the way you're talking to that girl. Watch it. <laughs> now, look. There was a truck here day before yesterday, parked right out there. Now, I've already explained about the markings on the rear end. A long life. A long life on the left side, a short life on the right side. That's right. What do you want from my life? I get a hundred truck drivers in here every day. Every time one of them orders a hamburger, I should go take a look at his rear end. Don't have to be a regular stop. It's a transient. Once and never again. Yeah, well, I'm waiting for the criminal to return to the scene of the crime. Oh, the Sherlock Holmes bit again. Piece of apple. to see you. What did I do? No, no, nothing. I'm looking for a gun that was dropped in the back of your truck day before yesterday. What gun? I didn't find no gun. Maybe it's still back here. Oh, no, there's nothing back there that don't belong there. I hosed the bed down myself last night. A brown paper bag. Did you find a brown paper bag? No, no, nothing. Okay, thanks. Hey, when was this day before yesterday, right in front of this place? Yeah. Maybe it was the other truck. What other no. truck? Our information was that this truck we're talking about had this long life and short life written on it like this one. Ah, the boss got a bug on that. He's got six trucks, he's got it on the back of all of them. You see, the other truck makes the run. It got into a wreck Thursday afternoon. Never even come back to the place. They took it right to the garage. Where's that? Uh, 36th Street and 10th Avenue. <laughs> There was some right in the back. Long life, short life. Yeah, this is it right here. That screw There were a whole bunch of cartons and other stuff on it when they brought it in. We didn't touch it. Were you here all the while? I had to pick up a wreck this morning. Who was here when you were gone? Sam. Hey, Sam! Sam, come on, where are you? Yeah! Likes to pick up a little sack time in the afternoon. What happened to the stuff that was on the truck? Oh, yeah, I remember. The owner sent a kid to pick the stuff up. What kid was that? Well, should I know? Did you get a receipt like you're supposed to? Sure. Hey, that's where you'll find his name. So where's the receipt? My wife's cousin. May I take this? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Sam. You've been a big help. <laughs> button, button. Stanley Livney found a gun in the back of a truck. Button, button. The police are looking for Stanley Livney. 
But Stanley, no buttons. It's a bright Saturday afternoon, and Stanley Livney has a gun and a girl. You know why? Because a draw from the shoulder is faster than one from the hip. Isn't that something? Nobody brings no guns to my house. I thought you said he was a college boy. Well, he said he was a college boy. Listen! Uh, I don't want any more out of you, my boy. Out! you were a couple of crooks. Where's the gun that goes in this thing? He took it. Who's he? Deirdre's old man. Did he give you that, too? No, I was running so fast, I fell down a flight of stairs. <laughs> okay, supposing we go over and see uh, Deirdre's old man. Come on. Right this way, gentlemen. I'll show you the exact place. Here's where I put it. Like a good citizen, I threw that dangerous and inimical weapon into the garbage. In here? Well, I put it right on top of my own hands not an hour ago. I tell you, that's where I put it. <laughs> What's so funny? You know, a man's life may depend on whether or not we find this gun. Okay, friend. very grateful to you. Well, sometimes you at least expect that something turns up. Oh, boy, I was so close. Len. Len, we'll be all right. Just forget it. Just forget it. Len, I think if we get a lawyer, he'll be able to help us. Now, listen, that... Twelve hundred bucks is all there is in the world, and I don't want you spending it for a lawyer here. No lawyer. Len, you just can't act like it's the end of the world. I can get a lawyer from the courts. What do you think I care about money for if something happens to you? How far do you think twelve hundred bucks is going to go in a murder trial? How long do you think it's going to be before you run out of the money? And then you'll be running scared to a hundred bucks from this person or a hundred bucks from that person. And then you'll be free to go out in the daylight because everybody will see your own money, too. Now, you're not going to use that money for me, you hear? Promise me. Promise! I can't, Len. Why do you want to make me feel worse? I get into trouble and it comes out of your hide. Edie, don't you understand? You're going to be alone. Get off my back. Well, what are you going to do about it? I'm not going to do a thing about it. Look, if I don't get to my car in about 30 seconds, I'm only going to get a parking ticket. Well, Colby, you haven't heard a word I said. You said they picked up Willie Willie Sabadowski in St. Louis, and you want me to file an extradition so you can talk to him. That's right. I've got news for you, by the way, because Parker called me about an hour and a half ago when I told him what I'm telling you. I'm not going to extradite. Brewer's already identified him. Now, how can you get around that? Look, all I want you to do is get him here. Bring him in town and let me talk to him. Now, how much is that to ask? Just about $1,500 of the state's good money. Oh, come on, Colby. Since when is the state penny pinching when a man's life is at that state? You want to be an assistant district attorney? You want to take my job? You want to go to law school for six years and spend two years clerking? Let me tell you about the law. There's a preponderance of evidence against Brewer. There's enough evidence for an indictment. The 
the fact that Brewer named Savardowski doesn't mean this much. I can go through every mug book we have and stick a pin into a picture at random and say, that's him. What does that prove? Why would he tell me where the gun was and if it was a murder weapon? You bring me that gun and a report from Ballistic saying it isn't a murder weapon, then maybe we can talk. When as and if. Chaplin, you want to hear my troubles? Well, you know what I tell all the young fellows. Treat me like a father. Mike, suppose you were convinced that Brewer's story was true. Suppose you wanted to find that gun of his. I don't. And I don't have any sympathy for him, either. I know you don't. But suppose you did. How would you go about it at this point? A gun is a very valuable object. All kinds of people want it. Kids. Guys who never owned an air rifle. Guys who might need a gun for protection, but who can't get a license. Like a cab driver, say. That kind of person might find a gun and keep it. They wouldn't report it. Then the other kind of person. They found a gun, they'd be horrified, scared. They'd throw it away. But they still wouldn't report it. Then there's the kind of a person who would see that a gun could be worth money. That kind of a person wouldn't report it either. He or she might take it to a fence. Of course, a fence might not want to talk about it, but it's a little bit of chance against no chance at all. Thanks, Mike. Adam, what I said to you is out of friendship. As a policeman, I think you're out of your mind. As your boss, I'll make it rough if you put in work on this deal and neglect your other assignments. I understand, Mike. item I said I'd find for you. The price is a hundred dollars. It'll be waiting here when you get here. Please bring cash. Yeah. Yeah, well, okay. Thanks anyway. Oh, boy. Frank, I bet there's a dozen fences in this town we've never even heard of. That was a long shot anyway. There's got to be one cooperative stool pigeon in this little book somewhere. Good news, boys. You got help. Lost gun. $250 reward will be paid for information on whereabouts of Colt 45 automatic pistol. Serial number 12410229. Write or phone Mrs. Leonard Brewer. Oh, come on. Back to the cooperative little stool pigeon department. Here. 
Try that one. Yes, I've come about the gun. Are you Mrs. Leonard Brewer? Won't you come in? I never go into strange people's apartments. Yes, I can trust you. A little. I make up my mind by the eyes. The pupils of the eyes, you know. If they're a little longer, then they are wide, like a cat, you know. You can trust them. Cats are very trustworthy. Please, this is very important to me. Please tell me what you know. I see you have a reward here. Yes, I'll be... I don't want it. Don't offer it to me. I'd be insulted. Now listen to me. Sunday afternoon, I saw Mr. Russ come out of his house and throw the pistol into the garbage can. Then you know what happened? Men came and Mr. Russ went to look for the pistol where he'd put it. But it wasn't there. Do you know where it was? It was in the pocket of that Russian spy. I've been watching him. He comes around three times a week and looks into the garbage can. Everybody thinks he's just a eye-cash clothes man. But I know better. That's the way they've been passing information back and forth to each other. And Ross is part of the ring. That's how he came to put the pistol there. A word to the wise is sufficient. Give the reward to these people. They take care of cats. I'd like to talk to Detective Flint, please. All right, all right, all right. Now, let's start all over again. You admit you found the gun in the garbage can, right? Yeah. And what did you do with it after that? I put it in my pocket. Huh? And after that? I did something with it. What did you do with it? Come on now, that's the one piece of information I need. What did you do with it? You're a detective, aren't you? Yeah, that's right, I'm a detective. I'm against the police function of the state. <clears throat> Frank! Now look, a man's life depends on this information. In the name of humanity, what did you do with it? I sold it to a man named Seymour at the Hand Ready Junkyards. We should put that question in the name of humanity before you to save us both a lot of time. You see, I'm against the police function, but I'm very much in favor of humanity. Button, button. A gun was found in a garbage can and sold by the man who found it, sold again by the man who bought it. And a garbage can led to a junkyard, and the junkyard led to a man's home. And still, the search wasn't ended because the man wasn't home. But his wife said this is where he works, and she wrote it down.
certain button at the bottom of a haystack. Overton? Yeah. Came to see you about a gun you bought two days ago. What's this for? It's a court order giving us permission to get it from you. Well, look, Mr. Overton, that gun is material evidence in a murder case. Where is it, Philip? I threw it in there, young. That's why I threw the gun in there. When? This morning. First thing this morning. Overton, better not lie now. But why would you buy a gun two days ago and throw it away now? I don't think that's any of your business. You better not tell me about my business. Hey, look, I threw it in there and it's melted down to slag. Why? Well, come on, I want you to tell me why. You gotta admit that ain't gonna spend a hundred bucks for a gun just to throw it away. I bought it because I wanted to hurt somebody. And I decided that it was wrong and... Well, I didn't want to get in trouble on account of her. On account of who? My wife. I, I threw it away to get rid of the temptation. And look, I swear it, I didn't do nothing wrong with it. I threw it in the first, now that's the truth. You're a lucky boy. An intention without the act ain't a crime. I throw the book at you. Throw a gun into a glass canister. I don't work in a foundry. But well, what about the bullets? Would you throw bullets into a fire like that? Right. What did he do about the bullets? What good was the bullets without a gun? you guys the truth. I was going to throw it in. I, I, I was. When you guys come up on me. Funny, you know. A guy like me, a tough guy. Rough, big. Fight. Fight sometimes. You think somebody like that could kill somebody? Well, you would have. If you'd thrown this gun away. We shouldn't have been looking for a gun in the first place. We should have been looking for a gunman. All right, all right. I'll file on Zabodowski's extradition today. Well, I guess you earned the souvenir this time, Adam. As long as we live, Mr. Clinton, I, I don't know how to thank you. Well, I'm glad it's all over. Oh, I spoke to the parole board. We can have this back now. We don't want it. Won't you please get rid of it? You see, the, the law states that if a gun isn't in working order, why, it's no longer considered a weapon. And in this one, the searing spring is broken, the firing pin is missing. Huh? Huh? Okay, well, good luck. million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them.
Green Gems film presentation from Columbia Pictures, produced by Herbert B. Leonard.